What's going on guys? Adam Snyder here with The Homemade Entrepreneur. Today, I want to show you how to start a vending machine business and start to earn passive income in 2019. Now, a vending machine is not something that is online. It's just not. Now, normally I talk about online businesses that you can start, but a vending machine business is something that is very passive, that doesn't take a lot of work, and as long as you have the motivation and the drive to be successful with it, you can. So, in this video, I'm going to explain the numbers behind it, roughly how much you're making from every single vending machine, how to really scale this business, and where to go to buy the vending machines to start your business. Also, I'm going to kind of walk you through it, kind of step by step, show you what are some, uh, in my opinion, some of the best locations to actually put your vending machines, and I'm kind of going to walk you through you know, just what I would do and what I recommend, all right? So the very first vending machine I purchased was actually back in, I think, in 2005, and it did did okay, and I started to scale my little vending machine business. Since then, I sold the ones that I had, and in 2019, my plan, my goal, is to buy more vending machines and really ramp up my vending machine business again. So this is what I'm gonna do. So one of my personal favorite machines to buy is the Venstar 3000. Now the reason why is because number one, these are very good machines. All this stuff, the, the little doors, you know, all the mechanisms, the casings, the where you put the candy, the lid up top, even the stand, all that stuff can be replaced. So when you put your vending machine out in some location and somebody you know breaks the door off, breaks off one of these doors or breaks off the collection tray, you can just buy a new one and replace it. You don't have to buy a whole new vending machine. So in my opinion, the Venstar 3000, and these are actually here on eBay, the Venstar 3000 currently is going for about $65. You can find them for right about 50, okay? You can buy them about 50 bucks. They do cost a little bit to ship. This person's asking $71. I would look for a different person to buy them from, but the Venstar 3000, in my opinion, is the best one. Look right here. So I'm to Craigslist. I'm gonna type in Venstar, and I'm gonna hit search, okay? So right here, the Venstar three selection candy machines for $60 in federal way, so pretty close to me. And they're selling nine candy vending machines, $60 each, or $500 for all. Now, that's not like an incredible deal, okay? But, you know, we could probably get it for a little bit cheaper than that, but that would be pretty good. You can start your your vending machine business if you're in Federal Way or close by. Um, you can start with nine machines, and it's gonna cost you, I'd say anywhere between four to $500 to start. Now, that's pretty good. Now, if you're like I was when I first started my vending machine business, I didn't know what kind of candy or what kind of toys, what to put in the machine. But I figured out you have to really understand your market and have a niche. My niche was kids. I was going after kids. That's what I wanted to do. So figured out what are the three best candies for kids. Well, you can actually find all of them over at Costco. Here I am on Costco.com. So M&Ms for 62 ounces is $11.99. Skittles for 54 ounces is $7.79 and for the Jelly Bellies for four pounds, okay, it is $16.29. Now, what you need to understand is all these prices matter and here's the reason why. So, I'm gonna explain the numbers in just a second, okay, and that's gonna explain why all these prices matter, okay, but just understand that these are some of the best locations. Let me explain why. Hair salons, are just an incredible place to put a vending machine. Number one reason why is because the people that work at the hair salon, the managers, the owner, whoever it is, okay, the uh, the you know hairstylist, they don't want to worry about the vending machine. They would rather have somebody come in and then you give them a small percentage. For example, ten percent. So hair salons are key because when adults come in, you know, a dad, a mom, a grandparent, chances are they are gonna have a kid with them, especially parents. You know, you go in and you take, you know, you have two or three kids, one person's getting their haircut at a time, the other two are, or one or two are sitting there doing nothing, 
So the likelihood of them putting 50 cents in the vending machine is very high. Tattoo parlors. How often do you go into a tattoo parlor by yourself? It's very rare, okay? I only have, you know, one tattoo, but, you know, from what I've heard, what from what I've talked to a bunch of people that own tattoo parlors, they don't, people don't come in by themselves. Usually they come in with somebody and they watch them get a tattoo. Well, they're sitting there doing nothing. They don't want to leave, go to the store and get a drink and get something to eat. So they use a vending machine. Auto repair shops are big as well. When you're waiting to get your car, uh, the oil changed or something just looked at, oh, I might stick a quarter in the vending machine. All right, cool. There's another transaction. Especially toy stores. For example, maybe uh, it's on books or uh, something there. They're just doing, uh, for example, like wooden toys or organic stuff or they're doing, you know, some type of specialty toy for a certain type of child, uh, you know, things like that. Okay, those do really well. Sports stores, uh, especially ones that just are sticking to a specific theme. For example, skateboarding, snowboarding, rollerblading, uh, soccer, basketball, baseball, golf, things like that. Those do extremely well. Don't go after the big stores like Big Five or Dick Sporting Goods. They're not going to do you any good. The kids activities. These are kids activity centers that do things like laser tag and maybe a trampoline park or a bowling alley. Those do extremely well. Daycare centers. What I've noticed from daycare centers, and that was my bread and butter, was I put them in a daycare center every Friday. Okay, I could check every single day of the week and barely any would sell. I'd make barely any money, but Friday, it's like, okay, it's Friday. I'm picking up my kid. So I told them if they're good all week, they can have 50 cents to put in the vending machine. And that's what a lot of them did. Okay. So Fridays were the best days and around tax time. That is pretty much January 1st. Okay. Through April 15th. Okay. That's tax time. Those are the, that's the peak time where I'd recommend you go to some H and R block, you know, pop up shops. You go to these different tax services and see if you can put your vending machine in those tax prep centers. Okay. And just do that in tax time because after that, you're going to make very little money. So let me explain something. So one thing I want to address is that a vending machine business can be very passive, but it can also require a lot of work up front because you have to go and find those locations first. That's where I recommend calling, sending an email or actually dropping in. Okay. I'd call first and just see if there's a time you can come into the hair salon and maybe talk to somebody about uh, a possible vending machine uh, inside their location. Some people will already have one. Some people won't. If they do have one, you can still increase your their commission. So let's say somebody's giving them 10% of whatever the machine makes, which is normal. Okay, 10% is about where you want to be. But let's say to entice them to get rid of the old person and have you bring your vending machine, one of the things you could do is say, I'll give you 20%. I'll double it. So they're going to make a little bit more. So this is probably only going to be maybe 5 to $10, but it's still going to be more and better than what they're making from somebody else. So that's one way you can get in the door. Okay, another thing, you have to drive to these locations probably two to, I'd say between two to three times per month. In most cases, it's just two. You go every two weeks. Some, some instances, you're only going to go once a month. But you want to keep the majority of these, these vending machines in a small area okay you don't want to have them you know 50 miles away one direction 100 miles in the next direction you know when you're going you know west east south wherever you're going you won't be driving around all week long you know trying to uh put more stock in this in or more inventory into your vending machines you don't want to do that you can waste time you can waste gas okay that's not what you want to do keep them close if you can find a like a like an outdoor mall that has a bunch of different stores you'll hit up every single store. If you have a bunch of different like little outlets or you have a bunch of like a, a kind of an office space, go to every single location and see if they could use this because not only are the customers that are coming in, not only are they potential customers for your vending machine business, but also the employees, the workers will put money in eventually. Maybe not on day one, but at some point they probably will. Let me show you this. Let me show you the numbers, all right? 
for a good location, not prime, not a prime location, not something that's going to make you the most money ever, but a good location is going to do about $40 profit per month. Now, that is not a lot of money. That's a little over a dollar a day. That's not a lot, right? It's not. But it's still something. $40 a month, that's going to take you about, you know, three to four months to pay off your vending machine, okay? And then all the rest is profit after that, right? How great is that? Cost per machine. It's about $100 to $150 per machine. And that's if you're getting like the Benstar 3000 or even 4000. Uh, there's other other places like candymachines.com. You can get some great machines, brand new, all in excellent condition. The only issue is you're going to pay a little bit more. You're going to pay about $180 to $200 per machine. And that's for one of the triple, the tri-head machines like I showed you. Cost of the candy is about 20%. Okay, it's about 20%. So if for every quarter, because all these are going to take quarters, for every quarter, it's going to be about five to six cents per transaction. Okay, and the reason for that is because, which you got to understand, M&Ms, Skittles, and Jelly Bellies all range in price. They all vary. So just keep that in mind. So if your goal profit is $2,500 per month, that means you have to and i'm not including anything like taxes i'm not including gas i'm not including uh the commission that you have to pay because that's not something that you know i know maybe there's gonna be 10 percent. maybe it's not i have no idea okay but for total sales you need about 3200 dollars to make 2500 dollars in profit off your vending machine business and i know that seems like a lot of money and 2500 dollars is, is a very good income $2,500 is not going to make you a millionaire, but if you make $2,500 every single month, what that tells me is if a, if a new vending machine costs $100, that means every single month you could, you could seriously add you know, 25 new vending machines every single month that are going to make you $40 average profit per month. Okay, That's pretty good. Most people don't realize how much money they could actually make as long as they just keep adding more and more vending machines. But honestly, all you need, you know, one vending machine here, get another one in a month or two, every single month add one more vending machine, and you can start bringing in a passive income that you can actually live off of. I know you probably saw this already, but in order to make $2,500 based on these numbers, how many machines do I need? Well, you need 80 machines. Now, some are gonna do better than $40 a month, some are gonna do you know, less, but on average, it should be about $40 per month for a good location. So just understand you have to put in the work. Now, if it's $100 per machine and you have to buy 80, well, you get the idea. You're gonna spend about $8,000 on the machines. If you can buy them for $50, okay, $50, that means you're gonna only spend $4,000 on the machines to start your business, which is gonna make you $2,500 a month. Okay, that's pretty good because how many of you currently make $2,500 a month in passive income? So the last thing I just want to say and the last thing I want to address is a vending machine business is not a sexy business. Nobody says, oh, I'm a vending machine entrepreneur. I've never heard that ever. Okay, but could you be? Yeah, you could. Could you make a lot of money from vending machines? Yes, you could. Could you eventually dive into, you know, pop machines, water, uh, se selling toys and electronics because they have those vending machines could you do that yeah you could but to start out start with something simple candy you can buy the vending machine on ebay you can go on amazon and buy one one that's very similar go to costco and buy all your supplies buy all the candy that you need simple then go to locations that you actually go to yourself go to your barber go to your hair salon Okay, go to whoever does your taxes. Okay, go to your local you know, mechanic and ask them, hey, do you have a vending machine? Oh, no. How about I put this here? I'm going to pay you $5 this month. Just set it up. And then we'll see how much money it makes. And then from there on out, we'll do, what, say 10%, 15%, 20%. What is going to get me in the door? Okay, and that's all you got to do. That's all you have to do to start. So to start a vending machine, all you need is the vending machine, the candy, the location and you're good to go so if you guys have any questions on 
how to start a vending machine business in 2019, how to make it a passive income that you can live off of, ask your questions down in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, want more videos on just different ways to make passive income this year in 2019, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you guys on the next one.